this video, we're going to be discussing some of the beginning concepts that we are doing in our decimals unit. So this is a new concept for fourth graders. They did not do decimals in third grade or before that, but they've already very quickly seen that there is a huge connection between decimals and fractions. Both decimals and fractions are helping us represent wholes and parts. So for example, this is an example of a number that has a decimal part into it. So all the numbers on this side of the decimal point represent whole numbers. So here we have three whole apples or three whole pizzas or whatever it is. Um, and so there could be tens or hundreds or thousands of whole objects. Then on the other side of the decimal point is where it's representing the parts, where one more object is being partitioned. And it's always representing that, or what we are working on in fourth grade is things that are represented in 10 pieces or 100 pieces. So for this example here, we have three whole apples and then there's like a fourth apple that's, we're only getting part of it. So we're getting three whole apples and then we're getting part of that fourth apple and it's partitioned into 10 pieces because that's the 10th place but we're only getting two of the 10 pieces. So this is three and two tenths, three whole apples and two of the 10 pieces from that fourth apple. So like I said, we are gonna be focusing in on the tenths and hundredths places. Um, so again, if, there, if the digits stop right here, that means it was partitioned into 10 parts. And if the digits stop right here, then it was partitioned into 100 parts parts. You could also see it as 10 parts and then a few extra little hundredths and we'll talk about that also. So what we're going to do down here is we're going to practice changing fractions into decimals and then decimals into fractions. And like I said, fourth graders are really already noticing that there's a huge connection between fractions and decimals. They're both showing holes and parts of, you know, values and quantities. So here we have six tenths. That means an object was partitioned into 10 pieces and we have six of them, or we lost six of them, or we're focused on six of those 10 pieces. So since I'm, I have the 10 denominator, I need to end my number in the tenths place. So I have no holes, and then I have six of the 10 pieces of an object. So since, I'm, since I have the tenth denominator, I need to end in the tenths place. So there it is, I have six tenths. Here, since I have the hundredths denominator, I need to end in the hundredths place. So sometimes I just make myself two little marks to know that I need to end here. And since I only have one digit, that one digit is going to go there. And so it's zero holes and four tenths. So zero and four tenths, or you could just say four tenths. Here, I have 62 hundredths. I want to end in the hundredths place. And since I have no holes, then I'm going to end in that hundredths place, and since I have two digits, it's going to be 62 hundredths. So you read it, you read what you see, and then you give it a name by where it ends. It ended in the hundredths place, so 62 hundredths, four hundredths, six tenths. Here, this one, we have seven whole apples or seven whole candy bars, so that goes on the left side of the decimal point, so seven holes, and then we have three tenths, so we're using just that first spot, so I'm going to say, and three tenths, so seven and three tenths, and kind of way back in fourth grade, we were trying to stop the habit of kids, you know, saying this number here as being 104, because and is used when we have a decimal, you don't, um, want to use and when you just have whole numbers. And is specifically representing that you're going from whole numbers to parts. Now here I have two examples of decimals and I want to turn them into fractions. Well, if I look, I'm ending in the tenths place, so I know my denominator is going to be 10. And then the two is going to be my numerator and this represents that an object was partitioned into 10 pieces and I have two of the 10 pieces. Over here, well, I'm ending in the hundredths place so I'm going to use a denominator of 100, and I have 81 of the 100 pieces. That's why it's called 81 hundredths. I have 81 of the 100 pieces. Now, I do want you to keep in mind, though, that you could also see this as I have 8 tenths and one little tiny hundredth. 
So you can think about it both ways, and that helps when you are needing to compare um, decimals or put decimals on a number line. And that's actually what we're going to get to now. So I'm going to put numbers on a number line. So I'm going to put two decimals on the number line. So I'm going to put this decimal right here and this decimal right here on the number line. And maybe I'll put this one too because it's just tenths. So I'll show all three of them. So the whole tells us where to start. So I'm going to start at zero. Now if I was doing this, I would start at seven and end it at eight. But since these all three are in zero holes, I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to put the next hole, which is one. But like I said, if I was plotting this one, I would start at seven and end at eight, the next hole. So now what I want to do is since I'm going to be putting tenths and hundredths, I'm going to partition my number line into ten parts. And then I'll show you what we'll do with the hundredths because we're not expecting fourth graders to partition a number line into a hundred equal parts. So I'm going to partition into tenths because I'm going to need to plot some tenths. So I like to make fifths the best I can. And then I like to turn that into tenths. And so now this is zero tenths and this is one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, and nine tenths. And then ten tenths would be a whole. Now we did this in fractions. If I wanted to put the fraction that belonged right there, it would just be this right here, one tenth two-tenths in a fraction form. So it would be the same thing. So I want to put six-tenths on the number line. Well, it's very easy for me to see that because tenths are very clearly shown on the number line here. So six-tenths goes right there. I'll put a star for six-tenths. Now, four-hundredths is a little bit harder. So I have to think here. It doesn't even have one whole tenth, so it should be way before the one-tenth over here. I mean, that's almost barely nothing. It's not a very large value, so it should be very close to zero. So since it has no tenths, it should be before the one-tenth. And I'm going to then place it here and think what well, needs to be here. And there's ten hundredths inside of there, so I'm going to kind of do my best to partition it. And it's less than five, so I'm going to put it right there. So that dot symbolizes over there. Now, 62 hundredths, this is where you can think, well, it means 6 tenths and then a few extra hundredths. So it's a little bit past 6 tenths. So I'm going to, I'll put a square for this one, 62 hundredths is right there. It's a little past the 6 tenths but it has a few extra hundredths. So this is where we were saying you can look at this as tenths and hundredths, or you can look at it as just hundredths. It just depends on kind of the scenario of what you're using the decimal for. So use these strategies and think about this when you are practicing decimals at home. Remember, that decimal point is dividing the holes and the parts. And in fourth grade, we are focusing on tenths being partitioned into 10 pieces and hundredths being partitioned into 100 pieces.